While building a trail at a park in Kitchener, workers came across something completely unexpected, evidence of a past civilization. Experts called in and as they started digging, it was astonishing what they found. The question now, with a public park surrounding it and a new subdivision just a few meters away, how to protect this rich archaeological find. It was a few years ago when the city of Kitchener was developing a trail in the Huron Natural Park that workers made a stunning discovery. David, how did you come across this site? We, we learned about the site in 2006 when we started to do the development of Huron Natural Area. What they found, spanning the size of two soccer fields, was evidence that an Iroquois village once stood here 500 years ago. It would have looked like this, about 10 longhouses, home to at least a few hundred people, who grew corn, fished in a nearby creek, and enjoyed family life. It was amazing. It was really hard to think because traditionally there's been so much focus in Huron Naturally about the natural component, and yet this brings in another whole cultural component. Archaeologist Paul Racher was quietly called in to have a look. All the while, the city was worried that looters might hear about the discovery, come in and disturb the site. So compare this to other sites that you have found. How big a deal is this? It's the, it's the best thing I've ever encountered, for sure. Front and back, it probably, probably goes about 100 meters in this direction and another, let's say, 100, maybe 120 in that direction. That's enormous. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big site. When Paul and his team began digging, they found clues in the topsoil showing where the longhouses had once stood. We see stains that outline the shape of the longhouses and any pits that were dug in the longhouses either for storage, for sweat lodges, for uh, refuse pits, for getting rid of ashes from fires, that sort of thing. But the mother load was the ancient garbage pit they stumbled across. Paul showed us some of the relics that he found. This is the skull of a female black bear which was found alone in a feature which is to say a, a storage pit or, or garbage pit. And the interesting thing about this is that if you look, at it, you can see there's a, there's a chunk that's been knocked out of it, a circular chunk with these radiating lines coming out from it. What does that, that tell it, you? It means it was probably hit with a club while the, probably while the animal was alive. This piece of pottery with intricate design dates back to the 1500s. When you find them in a, in, a, in a state of better preservation whole, it's amazing how, how symmetrical they are given that there was no potter's wheel that was used in, uh, well, there was no wheel whatsoever in the New World. And uh, this would be about 500 years old. Paul then pulled out some small bits of broken pottery he says are his favorite. A lot of time on these sites we'll find tiny little pots that look like they're kind of crude and they've been, you know, the, the incising looks almost like it was done with fingernail or thumbnail. And the interpretation of these is that they were made by little girls who were learning how to, uh, how to make pottery from their mothers. The Iroquois people who made these arrowheads were known as the neutral nation, says Paul. They were called that because they refused to side with either the English or the French. This, on the other hand, was probably a spear point. And the interesting thing about this was that it was found in a storage pit on this site, which is 500 years old, but this spear point is close to 9,000 years old. There are plenty more relics lying underground here, but Paul says the plan is to keep the site protected and undeveloped for now, which is interesting as there's a new housing project just a few meters away. Speaking of subdivisions, there's a house there that's about maybe 50 meters away. Yeah. When you see that, what do you think? I have to be careful. <laughs> a lot of the archaeology that we're allowed to do comes as a result of the development industry um, or infrastructure improvements and so on. So occasionally something like a subdivision gives us a chance to give, you know, to get a glimpse into Aboriginal history. But uh, certainly it's a shame if, it, if it's destroyed in the process too. It's also a shame, says Paul, that people in Ontario don't seem to appreciate native archaeology. While 500-year-old relics in Europe or the Middle East would be treasured, here they don't seem to have the same value. Why do we give such short shrift to Aboriginal archaeology here in the New World? And sometimes I think the only explanation is that we've spent 350 years saying Aboriginal culture isn't important. I think possibly because we have we bear some guilt for what has happened to Aboriginal peoples. 
Part of the problem is the lack of funding for this type of work, says Paul, adding that maybe in the future things will change. Somebody with perhaps better technology can have a look at it and learn even more from it than we do. Until that happens, the city has built this raised boardwalk so visitors to the park can see the area but not trample the site. In fact, stepping off the trail or taking anything will get you a hefty fine. We really encourage people to come out and, and look at the site and as I say over the winter we'll be developing more but I think the other thing is, is that it's really important for people to understand that this is a a significant site. It has a lot of importance to uh, to the First Nations and, and also to the city of Kitchener in that we ask people that they also respect the site and we've put certain measures in place to protect it too. Now as to what happened to the neutral nation, Paul Racher says that a 1650 war among the Iroquois caused the disbursement of this group. The survivors were likely adopted to the Six Nations and their descendants still live along the Grand River today.